if he if it's possible to go take a look at that thing, how much would it cost to go take a look at that thing? It would probably cost less than a billion dollars, say. And this guy that he's friends with is uh, I'm far be it for me to tell a billionaire how to spend his or her money, but I'm just I saying. I don't think you're going to talk Elon Musk into going looking at it. <laughs> right. Well, Elon's another kid. So I know you've. you've talk, so you have this piece of Mars, right? So he's trying yes. to get to Mars now, right? He wants to die on Mars. And hopefully, God willing, it won't be on impact, okay? That would be horrible if he dies on impact. Yeah. But, um, but Joe, have you ever thought, like, uh, which one of his 10 kids? I mean, Kanai Nahara, he's got 10 kids. Who's he going to leave behind? Like, who. Like to do if he that, goes to Mars. I think he's like he wants to go to Mars. He well, said he wants to die on Mars. By the time he is able to do this, he'll probably be fully grown adults. Maybe they can go visit him. They go come come with him. Apparently, the idea is to be able to come back. Just just like okay, I saw I, the Martian. <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> yeah, I love the Martian. Andy Weir is a UCSD. Uh, he didn't graduate from UCSD, but he wrote it. Um, but yeah, but I mean. Uh, it's, it is possible that one day we will have the technology to colonize other planets, right? Do we have the Do we have the reason to do it, Joe? What is the reason? Like, uh, this is what I isn't want... sometimes the reason just to be able to do it, or maybe That's... to ensure that human race survives if if there's some sort of a natural disaster on Earth. Do you know what Nixon wrote on the plaque that went to the moon on Apollo Eleven? No, what it said uh, we came in peace for all mankind. Mm. It's part of bullshit, right? It was a war against the Soviets. It was part of the Cold War. It was a war of propaganda. And it was important. It did a lot for science. Guess what? We haven't been back to the moon in 50 years, right? So if it was so important for peace and for technology, why haven't we been back, okay? So to say what we did, it's the Edmund Hillary thing, you know, climb Everest because it's there, right? Mm -hmm. but, um, but Elon has said the following. He has said, I want to go to Mars so that humankind becomes interplanetary. Then you ask, I love to keep asking why questions, right? right? Those are so annoying. Like your kids keep asking you why. You know what the ultimate answer is because I freaking said so. Go to sleep, right? So with, with, with him, I would keep asking why. Why do you want to send people to Mars? Why, why should uh, humankind be interplanetary? Mm -hmm. So that the flame of consciousness uh, never gets extinguished. Why? Um, why can't you go into the ocean? Why can't you build bubble cities? Why can't you build floating cloud well, cities? Well, the Earth gets destroyed. Okay, but why? Why what? Why 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 what? continue with humanity? Not just humans. And he's talking about human consciousness, which could also mean like AI stuff or, or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. But but here's my here's my bigger point. You've heard, you had Ryan Holiday on recently. He's got these memento mori co coins, right? Memento mori means remember you're going to die. Allegedly, Roman emperors would have some courtesan walking next to them, so they wouldn't have too much hubris. They would say, "Remember, you're mm -hmm. mortal. You're going to die." Um, that was done to motivate them to suck the marrow out of life while you're alive, right? Mm -hmm. So my question at some level is, well, is that true only of individuals? Or like, could it be true of a civilization as a whole? Could it be true that like, hey, wait, we shouldn't be dedicating all this effort. And I think it's, pro I wouldn't say it's as, as unlikely as life, you know, having iPhones on Proxima Centauri B, but, but I'd say it's pretty unlikely that we're going to do that in the next hundred years to have colonized Mars. It's, it's incredibly difficult from a technological standpoint, mm -hmm. from a biological standpoint, a psychological standpoint, uh, the raw material. Uh, there's a tremendous number of reasons that it, sure, it's Sure, but if possible. technology progresses the way it has since 1800, the way I mean, it's unre world. The world's unrecognizable. You could conceivably say that if it continues in the same direction and we don't blow ourselves up, we may very well have the ability to do something like that. So there's, and if you say why, yeah. well, why not? Well, why like, not is always a good it's answer. Because fascinating, right? Because it's interesting. Because people want to do it. Because it would be significant to have human life living on a terraformed Mars. To put it on our resume. Maybe we could use Mars as like a test to like how to recharge an atmosphere if we f it up. Right, but isn't it better just not to f it up? Yeah, it is not. It is better not to f it up. But it's also interesting. Like, if why go to the moon? Why oh, why sure. send satellites out there? Why oh. why look at stars? It's part why of all those things? It's part of this human desire to constantly innovate and Absolutely. move forward. But I, I question the Moore's Law kind of compatibility. And actually, you talked about this with Michio Kaku, and, and he was in his new book about quantum supremacy. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is, which is this this kind of faith in these exponential curves, and exponential curves are really tricky mo's, mofos because you know they sneak up on you for a long time, like mm -hmm. and they go like this, right? Well, one of the things that they do after they do this is they do this, 
they come down, right? You've heard of peak oil and stuff like that. Right. right? There's only a finite amount of oil because there's only a finite amount of pre-carbon and fossil fuels, et cetera. Right? But it's, it's, it's worse than that. As we get more and more um, uh, kind of technologically capable, we get better and better at keeping the Ponzi scheme going in a sense. Like the ore grade uh, of, of gold used to be like in California, 1849, right? They would stumble upon a huge brick rock of gold. They, that never happens anymore. That uh, the amount of gold per ton is like a gram per ton. It's incredibly small and it's going down. All these things are going down. They're all these diminishing S curves, they call them. They start off really high and so you get the go, go 90, you know, and then it goes, drops off to zero. There's no saying that that might not also happen for both extraction of resources that you need to build a colony on Mars, fuel, rocket parts, etc., but also for the, you know, the coming AI and computing revolution. In other words, Moore's law is saturating for a very interesting reason. It's not that it's not that the the speed of the computers is still doubling, but the amount of, do you care about the speed of your computer? No, you care about what I can do with it, right? right. How fast does the web page load up, right? Well, so you can have the fastest computer, but it's it's loading really slowly because there's so many other people that want to take advantage and use that same resource. It's a very highly in demand resource. Well, that will happen with quantum computing too. It's already happening with classical supercomputers. In other words, their speed is going up, but the out number of floating point operations they do is saturating because so many people want to use them because they're so good. They're a victim of their own success in a certain sense. Same thing can happen with mineral. So the question is, do we get there? And if not, well, what, what would that mean? Would, would we have like a civilization existential crisis? I don't know. I, I really don't know.